Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so for coming. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, President Zelensky. My name is Gaurav Savant. I work for India Today and Aaj Tak in India. How would you describe your meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi? What is your roadmap for peace? And what role do you see for India in achieving that aim, especially when India speaks for the global south, for the developing countries? This war impacts all. And may I request you, sir, in case you could answer this in English for our audiences, or bits of this, please? Thank you for coming. Gaurav, yes. Thank you for your question. So, first of all, a really very good meeting. And uh, this historic one, and for us, it's very important that the, the first prime minister from your very big country, and uh, during all our history, all our independent history, so it's during last 33 years, almost 33, because tomorrow it will be the 33rd independent day. So. This is a historic moment for our nations. It's not about me or Prime Minister Modi. It's not about personalities. That's why I, I think that it's more important that both of us. It's about both our nations. And that's why I think it's a historic moment. And I'm very thankful to the Prime Minister for coming. The second one, so. Yes, it's a good beginning with uh, some practical steps with the uh, first four documents between our countries. And I think it's just beginning. And uh, I think we will we'll, we'll continue, of course. Uh, we'll continue and we decided that we can have on the level of governments, we'll have meetings very, very productive and concrete. I like very concrete steps. Uh, to, that we, we have to have something very concrete, and it's much more uh, influential than any words. Yes, so uh, that's why these four documents is the first step. The, our common declaration, this is also important. The messages are important, which is there, but it's a political issue. But we are very happy we can uh, provide agricultural products and uh, if we can have connection on it. Uh, it's, it's all about food security for both our nations and for other nations. So it's not only about grain or wheat, and it's about a lot of different things. Corn, it's about also transit by the sea. It's not only food security, it's, you know, it's about metallurgy and etc. A lot, a lot of different things. And uh, now, you know, in the, in the century of high technologies and be very open during the war, we increased the level of our private companies, especially this kind of high technology and drones, sea drones, security, cyber security, and etc. And I said to Prime Minister, we'll be very ready to share with you these products and we'll be happy if it can be co-production and etc. And, and of course that we decided that our teams will begin to work on different issues uh, on it. So I think during the war this role is also very important because we need to strengthen our economy, really. And if we can have something very uh, detailed and some concrete things, uh, and contracts, I think it will help. Of course, we need win-win between our nations anyway, but during the war, it can help. More production, more contracts, it's, it's very good for us. It's more jobs and, and also for you. I, I mean, this is, again, win-win. So <clears throat> this is the first. Then uh, uh, about uh, role. If we are speaking about global role, because you have global influence, very big country, very big population, and uh, that's why, and very big uh, influence on the Russian economy. Today you have it, and it's true, because really a lot of export possibilities 
for Russia closed, uh, but India is open. We spoke about it with Prime Minister. Of course, it helps today for Russian army. And I think that uh, government of, uh, of India, uh, of course, understand it, understands it. And of course, we, we will be happy to work how to find alternatives. Because it's not about, again, you are know, very big country, it's not about millions, it's about billions which are coming back, which Putin has back to Russia, and then he, he uses it only, you know, because he has now really, officially, he has now war economy. War economy, it means that the priority is war, not peace. Not only for his soldiers, it means that priority for his economy is war. And of course, if billions will come, and, and, and they are coming from any market, from India, Arabic countries, China, I mean, of course, it helps him very much. So he has to feel how war is expensive, and his society has to feel, because he, he will not feel. Even he, if he will not get billions, he will not feel, because he's stolen all, all, all these billions from this, his people. His people are poor people, so he's stolen it during 30 years. That's why he will not feel it. But if his society will feel, they will push him to the peace. It's also very important, because his society, they don't understand what's going on. Or understand and support him because of the media influence in their country. Because Putin control all the media, totally, 100%. And social media, not only public, commercial, everything. That's uh, the role of India if you will stop uh, import the oil, he will have, Putin will have huge challenges, huge challenges. Uh, the sword, I think it's a peace way, or way to peace, yeah? So, my, uh, I think, uh, I, uh, we, we spoke about it with Prime Minister, so of course we want him very much to have in peace summit, and of course we'll be happy to work on it, and of course he, if he has his ideas or his team ideas, uh, we'll be happy to speak about it. But we don't change our territories on any, any propositions. So we don't change our people to any propositions and our territories and our values and our freedom and democracy. We will not change it. So it's absolutely understanding points. All other things, we can speak, we can decide, we can, you know, find any, but, but, but I spoke very openly with Prime Minister, you know, Prime Minister Modi wants peace more than Putin. <laughs> this is the problem, you understand? So the problem that Putin doesn't want. I don't know what about they spoke, I mean, all the details with Putin when they had meeting and etc. but I, you know, this, I, I said to Prime Minister, you, you know, with whom you have a deal. I mean that you speak with him, he is speaking to you how he wants peace, but at this moment exactly he is attacking hospital. Did he do anything good for us? No, he is a killer for us. But did he do something good for you, for India? If during official visit of Prime Minister you attack the children in the hospital. It's a very important moment. So he had to recognize after that that he 
doesn't respect India or doesn't control his army. And he will tell you that Putin controls everything. So he can't say that he doesn't control his army. So it means that he doesn't respect Indian prime minister. Otherwise, what, otherwise why he did it? So for me, he's very clear. He's not so, he's not so smart as his uh, Russian TV shows his people each day. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for your time. Uh, Dinako Peri, I work for a newspaper called The Hindu. Uh, from what you said, uh, I'll, I'll just seek two clarifications. Uh, one, you talked of the uh, the oil purchases. So, uh, what was the conversation since you, just, you said you raised it, but has there been some definitive, you know, thing which has been proposed or pitched, alternative discussed? One, two, you also talked of the uh, co-development and co-production high-tech technologies. Can you just elaborate on any specific things that you have discussed, what has been offered, or what is the roadmap for this going forward? For today, long line, I don't know, I don't know maybe how to say it in English, um, a different, a big number of different kinds of such technological things. It's, it's about agricultural, about demining, about medicine, about security, like I said, it's drones, it's uh, electronic warfare systems, it's a, lo a lot, a lot, it's connections and, and, and etc. like I said, against uh, cyber attacks. So we are ready to speak about it, to speak about uh, sea drones uh, and a lot of different uh, technologies. We had, uh, I think, uh, good agreements before the war about engines uh, to your uh, um, defending sector and etc so we are very open with with all of this and we are ready to co-produce for our both markets that what i said of course we can do after the war more tens times more, because for today the priority is to defend ourselves. I think that you understand it. But anyway, we are ready to begin this work, because the war was, will finish. Anyway, we know it, and we, we, we want to, to do it, and we, I mean, this, we, we are very open for this. Then, as I said, agriculture, not only growing not only uh, but also about we can speak about the hubs how to uh, save how to secure agricultural products during long long period of time with all this climate and other challenges so we are ready also with this uh, about about um, you asked about uh, alternatives for the import of oil yeah so you know we can't say we I mean that we shared we understand what money I mean what money Russia has on this deal with India. We understand it very, very much and very well with details. That's why so we we want to try to do everything possible to stop it. But we can't push you are an independent country and, and government, and it's your government. We, we can't do anything, you know, illegal. That's why I said that we are asking you to think, and we are ready to work if you are okay with the idea that we will, we will do what we can, but we have to stop, give money, and strengthening Russian arm. That's our position. So... I don't have answer for today, of course. I don't have it. But uh, if we are ready to, you know, to work together, and to, we will. You know, if two sides want to have deal, they will have. Hi, sir. I'm Siddhanta from Vion, is India's international channel. Uh, my question to you is: When Prime Minister Modi was in Moscow, you condemned the embrace uh, between the Indian Prime Minister and the Russian President. He's here in Kyiv. He embraced you. Has your assessment changed because he is present in Kyiv meeting you and hugging you? My second question is, um, you talk about uh, territorial integrity uh, and aggression. 
Uh, China in the Indo-Pacific has been aggressive with countries, including with India. Will you condemn China on the same terms? And my third question is the curse uh, incursion. What is the assessment you shared with the Indian side and how long you plan to continue? How deep you plan to continue this incursion? Do you plan Moscow itself? I am happy the Prime Minister came to visit us. To, and I believe this is very important. This is the first visit of the Prime Minister of India to Ukraine. We are ready on our part to do the respective steps. We've heard the messages from the Indian side that they would be happy to welcome us, our team in India. I believe this is the approximation of our parties that is positive, not negative. As for the Putin, my position was that and my signal of condemnation was not because the Prime Minister came to see Putin, but because the Prime Minister came to Putin and Putin killed our children and we wanted to have some reaction, to hear some response. And I think it's important that the democratic world is understanding what is happening, that Putin is a killer. And uh, as for the hugs with the Prime Minister of India, or the handshakes, or anything else, it's the a uh, decision made by every leader. I can't tell you anything uh, with regards to that. I believe that if the leaders of the world are meeting with the other leaders who kills people, children, who conquers territories, invades into the territories, it means that there is no diplomatic isolation to this person. It means that this is an act, well, I believe it like that, that this act will not result in a, a, a person like Putin would understand that he is doing something wrong, that he is isolated, that he is alone, that the whole world condemns him. That is why I believe that we cannot remain silent, we have to respond, and I always respond because I know what would be the end to that a longer war, someone gets um, tired or has a fatigue, one person meets Putin, three, four, five, and then the people would gradually forget about the occupation, the killings, because life goes on and there is many economic challenges in a variety of countries and you would need to think about your own your own interests so i will keep reminding uh, this to anyone we have contacts with and i think this is important and let me pass to the second part of your question now why is this important because this is a signal if the putin can do something, then the others can do something. So whenever you're asking me about the other countries, including China, I think as long as Ukraine stands and fights and condemns the violation of sovereignty and territorial integrity, as long as the world is with Ukraine, the risks of other crises occurring in the world decrease. That is what I believe. If there will be a justification of Putin's actions, then I'm confident there will be consequences in other parts of the world as to the violation of the territorial integrity. Now, if those consequences, if the violation of the territorial integrity, sovereignty, etc., will happen, then Ukraine will always stand in support of those countries whose rights are being violated and there will be countries fighting for their own freedom and Ukraine will always support them. And it doesn't matter the size of the country violator, the 
size in terms of the territory or in terms of the army, because it's a matter of values. And these are the matters of people as well. Every single person, because every single person is important. And, well, as for uh, uh, well, uh, the other question, as for our operation, the, you've asked about the Kursk operation, because this is what I was interpreted. We did not uh, incur it into their territory, but in fact it was Russia that incurred and invaded the, the territory of Ukraine 10 years ago. They've prepared the incursion in the Kharkiv region and they wanted to occupy uh, the city of Kharkiv with the population of 1.5 million people because uh, Russia has invited, invaded in this direction and the people from these small settlements of the Kharkiv region, they went to the city of Kharkiv, and now the population of the Kharkiv city is 1.5 million people. Russia wants to occupy this city. We stopped. So that was part of their operation. We have um, deterred that. We have broken that. And their next, next step was in the north of our country, and they've prepared everything for that. Uh, and. Uh, they were planning to start operating uh, from the vicinity or from the direction of the Sumer region. And the difference is that we have conducted some preventive actions, preventing them from occupying our city. We managed to do that earlier. And since Putin is occupying us and he's not doesn't really taking care of their own, of his own territories. And we clearly understand that because the air defense in Russia, well, we know because we are um, provide, uh, taking attacks against their energy facilities. Well, they are hitting our energy facilities. We are hitting their, we are hitting their uh, airfields. We know where they have the air defense. Just for you to understand, there is an air defense uh, along, uh, around Moscow, around the summer house of uh, Putin in St. Petersburg. But uh, in small cities and settlements in the Kursk region, where we've uh, entered, there's no air defense. Well, yes, there's their military. There are some forces, but they don't have the uh, air defense of, uh, of a size and capacity as it is uh, around the uh, house of Putin. So clearly he cannot hold this and he has to start feeling this war and he will feel this war. We don't have other chance because otherwise if you're not stopping, if the diplomats of the world are not willing to isolate him totally, then he will continue with his um, military actions. He will continue with killing children. We showed him once this in the Kursk direction. My name is Mridu Lagos. I work here. I teach international relations. In which academy? In Kiev Mohila Academy. So I also write for the magazine called The Week. I have the following question. Have you talked about nuclear security because there's four directions in memorandum that we've seen, but what portions of your peaceful plan of 10 points could you discuss uh, or have you discussed and what the India could be interested in and will there be a future peace summit? Have you discussed that, whether Russia will be participating and have you seen a significant political will on the part of the Prime Minister Modi? To, to, to discuss that. And could you comment the involvement of India in the release of the abducted children and maybe the uh, condemnation of Russia's actions with regards to the citizens of India that were forced to, uh, they were tricked to um, participate in uh, the combat operations. I will start with that question. The Prime Minister Modi uh, started with that. He said that uh, he condemns that and he will make everything possible for the citizens of India not to be fighting uh, in the lines of the Russian army. I perfectly understand him. I just 
I, I can't understand how could you enroll those citizens, I don't know, forcefully or not. I don't know how could it happen. Then, as for the peace summit, I truly believe that the second peace summit has to take place. Well, it would be good if it would uh, be held in one of the Global South countries. We are very open on that. And there are countries like Saudi Arabia, like Qatar, like Turkey, Switzerland as well, but that's a different direction. But, and we are currently talking to those countries about hosting the second peace summit. I perfectly support, and I told this to Prime Minister Modi, and uh, we could have the Global Peace Summit in India. It's a big country, it's a great democracy, the, the largest. But I want to be frank, this is not only related to India, but any state that is, uh, you know, that would be positive to hosting second peace summit. We won't be able to conduct a peace summit in a country who hasn't joined the uh, communique of the peace summit at the point. Well, I, I guess you understand this. Nobody is exerting any pressure, but that is logical. The second aspect, we have discussed all matters uh, related the communique as well as uh, those of the questions that were discussed uh, during the peace summit. And uh, yesterday uh, there was an online meeting on energy. There was a big meeting after the uh, first summit. And well, the teams have started to work on the first point. They've started to elaborate the plan. And as I've told you, by November, we want to have all plan on all the points. And that is why we wanted to, the countries to join that, because if they want to have additional points or clauses or they disagree with something, well, perfect. Let us have a working uh, level meeting at the level of NSA, let them have, uh, let them do the work. And I told that we're ready to work with you on the matter. Who knows? Maybe we will. So going back to that energy, that is uh, something we've discussed and includes nuclear. And frankly speaking, we um, didn't have enough time to have a detailed conversation on nuclear safety, even though we raised all three questions, uh, just as the food safety and the children. As for the children, look, there's several countries willing to help in this matter. And, you know, the number of these countries will never be enough. And we would be happy if India would join that part of the formula, the return of uh, the children. That is a humanitarian aspect. Well, from the standpoint of the neutrality of your status, even though I would like to underline that none of the points and uh, none of the signals that were mentioned in summit does not uh, has anything to do with the weapons. That is why I think that India can select any of the points, can join um, many topics and uh, can come up with their own vision, with their own additional viewpoints, etc. We are ready to have an open and fair dialogue. Good evening, President Zelensky. I'm Vijay Lakshmi. I work for a news channel called India TV in uh, India. I just wanted to know what is the road, uh, to, what could be the possible road for the peace? Uh, you know, there is a war that has been going since last few years, but uh, you've seen that you're, you're very far away from the peace. Pri uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been talking about diplomacy and dialogue, that it can only be resolved, the conflict can only be resolved by dialogue and diplomacy. These things can't be resolved on battlefield. Do you agree with that? And uh, has anything been proposed in the meeting between you and Prime Minister Modi on those lines? I believe that our approach, well, if we're talking about our steps, both on the battlefield and in the diplomatic level, our approach is closer to peace than any other proposals. Because this path is very complicated, 
and all the proposals available that you've heard from multiple countries of the world, and I have mentioned this in my conversation with Prime Minister Modi today, and I believe that today everything we can hear is just a political statement. It's not a path. It's not a formula of any sort. It's not uh, specific in any point. Some say he will put an end to this war in half a year, the other in a year. The other expert would say he would need a day. The fourth expert says that believe the war would be finished in 2026 when Russia's economy will fall. Look. All of those are statements. There are different statements. Some are analytical, some experts, others political. But no one has any single plan. When, well, whoever might say that, that we support the diplomatic settlement, I always support this. We all want to have you know, a situation where not a single soldier would be killed now, tomorrow, not a single citizen of Ukraine would be killed tomorrow. We want this, but how can you agree with the rapist or a murderer? Look, like, have a seat. We understand that you've already raped 15 people and you killed another 30, but let's talk. Come on, please don't do that. It's, it's not going to work like that. Um, with a person like that, he's not afraid of political intimidation. So I'm talking about Putin. All the countries of the world are saying that it's your aggression. 143 countries have supported the UN resolution and they recognized Russia as aggressor. They recognized them as occupiers, 143 countries of the world. And what was his response? Look at the dates. Ukraine came to summit in NATO and he had a shelling of uh, the hospital, the UN General Assembly. He's not coming. So there was a session of the UN General Assembly he uh, launched an attack against our cities, killing hundreds of people. So these look at his re responses to diplomacy. So whenever you are saying about diplomacy, I'm both hands for that, for the diplomacy. But I would like to have some to see some specific steps so that it wouldn't be at the cost of 30 percent of our territory and not at the cost of our population. If there is a plan like that, we're happy. But believe me, Putin, well, I, I, I know that everyone thinks that he has a great geopolitical goals, imperial views and things like that. 100% he wants to return the influence uh, that existed during the Soviet period. He will not return that influence. He won't have time to do that. Because um, not the age, nor the world would give him the time to be in time to do that. The Ukrainian armed forces, well, in small numbers, are entering his regions, and he can't do anything with it for 20 days. You, you understand? And everyone around, and all the, these political players, they can see that, well, it's all clear with him. The armed forces are not that capable. He's just a villain that is intimidating uh, with the nuclear weapons or threatening with nuclear weapons. Everyone understood that even those who have handshakes, um, who have some contracts, believe me, all the conclusions were already made. He is not a player already. He's just a maniac, well, a, a big terrorist, and most are treating him like that. Good evening, President. I'm Rudranil Ghosh from the Times of India. Uh, my question to you is, uh, given that your uh, military is undertaking the Kurks operation at the moment, what, according to you, 
is victory for Ukraine today? And how do you reconcile peace and victory? Plus, did you have any kind of discussion uh, with the Indian side about uh, the participation of India in the reconstruction of Ukraine? Our economic experts and economic teams will be uh, talking about the recovery. We simply didn't have enough time. We uh, uh, originally wanted to have a, a one-on-one -on -one meeting for half an hour, but instead we had a two and a half hours. So I believe we'll have more meetings, uh, I believe, and the economic direction will be something will be discussed by our economic country. I'm interested in increasing our our economic turnaround by three to five times, and that's not too much. That's at least we're returning to a pre-war indicators. We can do that. We want to do that. We will be open in all the directions, and there is not a single direction where we can increase uh, the turnaround. And wherever the Indian side would support that, we will amplify uh, that. Uh, that is something that I can guarantee. Operation in Kursk is a part of a, a large military political, military diplomatic operation. And believe me, all that we are doing is done only to force Russia to be ready to a fair peace. The operation in Kursk prevented them from uh, capturing our Sumi region, weaken our positions, strong, uh, making their position stronger. So it was very complicated for us without the assistance of partners for a long period of time. It was, it was difficult for us to uh, take the initiative once again. We needed to do that. So that is one of the stage of uh, this concept, and you've seen that. And it worked, but it worked only for what I'm mentioning you. I can't give you all the details about the goals of our actions when it's what will finish. It will be obvious. Why did we do this? And what's, what, what, what for? Since I'm Uma Shankar Singh from NDTV India, my question to you is that uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has visited Ukraine on your invitation and we got to know that uh, Prime Minister Modi has also extended one reciprocal invitation to you because a new chapter has started uh, by this visit uh, which happened after 32 years of uh, diplomatic relation. So uh, when would you like to visit India because you uh, suggested uh, Prime Minister Modi to have a global summit, a peace summit in India. So uh, uh, in that direction, if you want to uh, enhance the cooperation with India, do you have any uh, any any timeline in your mind? Uh, I know that uh, this uh, country is going through a war and it's very difficult to leave the country very often, but you travel abroad, which we saw on TV. So uh, do you have any uh, uh, plan to visit India soon or, or, or sooner or later? Sooner better, yes. Because when, when you, you when you begin partnership, strategic partnership, and you begin some dialogue, I think that you don't need to lose time and do big pauses. And that's why I think it will be good to meet together again. And if our meeting will be in India, I'll be happy. I, I read a lot about your uh, big and great country. It's very interesting. I, I will not have time to see your country. It's a pity, because during the war I don't have time to, to look and to, to see. But I think it's important anyway to see your people. I think to understand country is to understand people. Also, I don't think that I will not have enough time. But, uh, but anyway, it's better to be in your country, because to find key to your country and to your prime minister is to see your people. And I need very much to find key to your country because I very much need your country on our side, not balancing between us and Russia. It's not about your historical choice, uh, but who knows, maybe your country 
can be, you know, this is the key in this diplomatic um, influence. That's why I'll be happy to, to come to India as soon as your government prime minister will be ready to see me. And of course, it depends on two things. When you'll be ready, and of course, when I have to stabilize some moments with my team, including soldiers, of course, to stabilize some moments on the battlefield. So we have now very good, very good chance. So this only two two moments. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Jagvinder Patel. I'm working for ABP Network in India. Mr. President, my question is: Once you were known as a famous comedian in Europe. But now you are in new role as a president and moreover as a soldier of this country. How do you define your no your new role in this zone, basically in war zone? А у нас вы знаете люди you know people um, had different professions when the war started. They were artists, they were athletes, electricians, engineers, and everyone started to join the military, went to war. Someone who volunteered to go to the front lines, other were, others were mobilized. There's people who simply could not uh, continue working in their profession during the times of war, and there are artists who I think they also serve because they're traveling around the front lines and that they support the morale of our forces. And I believe myself uh, as a person who has to serve my own country, this is my obligation. And I think this is the most important, because everyone has this duty. We have to protect and to serve the country, Ukraine and Ukrainians. So I think that, in any case, as the president of Ukraine, I'm the guarantor of our constitution and the protection of our territorial integrity and sovereignty is the protection of our constitution. This is my duty to put an end to this war, not to defeat, not to, loo not to lose the uh, independence and to start the rebuild and reconstruction process of Ukraine. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, inviting us. Um, can you sustain the war effort if Donald Trump becomes U.S. president? I didn't get from, I mean, this we will see in November, but uh, anyway, uh, I didn't get any signals from his team that, uh, or from him. I mean, we had some, we had one bilateral talk. I mean, this during this period of time, during the war time, yes, we had one phone call. So. I only had messages that he will support Ukraine and he will do everything how to stop the war and uh, to do everything Ukraine be independent European and and free free so that's all messages I've got from him but, but di directly but but anyway I can't you know prognose so and and I think all, you also so we will see in November what will be my name is Ashok Raj from ANI the another part of the world is also fighting for their regions uh, i'm talking about israel and gaza and there is a fight for the religions uh, differences like islam and others what's your take and thoughts about israel and gaza gaza and do you think that uh, islamist uh, jihads are uh, the concerns for the new world of era First and foremost, we cannot compare this because you've mentioned the re religious differences and we cannot compare our war. I mean, the war of Russia against Ukraine, I wouldn't say that there is a significant religious discrepancies between our countries. There's different, there's a lot of uh, different religions. And I guess the same religions are available in Russia. So it's not a war that has anything to do with religious discrepancies. This is a war of a one person. One person, that's it, who came to that. 
And I wouldn't be comparing that war as well, because in, in our case, we have a person that is gradually doing all these steps. It came to Moldova in the beginning of 90s. So what happened? When the countries restored their independence and uh, there was a dependent of the Soviet Union, and then the policy of the Russian Federation, well, it started wasn't with Putin, and he continued this policy. He had become has become a true Hitler in this policy, and this direction says the return of the influence. It started before him, because it was like a frozen conflict. There's uh, all these same manual uh, as it was in Moldova. They occupied a part of this country. They cut a piece, the Transnistria. They cut it. They, uh, they were saying that they kind of protect the local population with their own forces. And the same thing they've done in Chechnya. They've destroyed everything. They killed all the people, everyone who had their own kind of voice or the independence. The next step, if you remember, was in 2008. That was in Georgia. And all the same, they uh, sent their tanks and forces to the country. They cut a piece in Abkhazia. What, do they have Russians living in Abkhazia? No. The people uh, who live there, they speak the same language as Georgia. So in all the cases, they were finding the reasons. But in any case, the methodology is all the same. They have the people, uh, their own forces there. They cut the peace. They, uh, they keep their own forces there. And they're destroying the whole region. Because Abkhazia, it's uh, a long distance from you. Even though you're a journalist, you know a lot. But I'm not sure you've been to Abkhazia. But I've been there, I've been to Transnistria and to Moldova, I've uh, been to Georgia many times and I've been to Abkhazia. So once during the Soviet times, it was a recreational area that was very popular. They have a unique nature in there, they have a unique climate and a unique recreational facilities. Now, what came with Russia? Now it's all destroyed. There's no tourism there. Absolutely. And all the same, after Georgia, they did to Ukraine. They came into Crimea, and they count the Crimea, they count the Donbas. Once again, there was a recreational area. Three million Ukrainians were having holidays, were spending holidays in Crimea. They lived in Crimea. Now imagine, once again, zero tourism economy is uh, zeroed, and the region is kind of destroyed. So everywhere, the same steps being taken, nothing new here. This is the war of this man. He had this idea. And we can't it, uh, compare with a, with a situation, with a war, with the crisis, with all these crises in the Middle East. It's not only the religious aspect. I wouldn't say it like that. It's not only religion aspects. There's a big history, and there is a lot of other interested parties around for that conflict to exist. It's not, you know, uh, uh, differences between the Israel and Palestine. You can see what is happening. There's the training, there's the weapons, there's the funding, there's many other kind of influences. As for our position uh, with regards to this uh, conflict, we have always stated that we respect, we recognize the uh, policy of both countries, we recognize Israel, we recognize Palestine. This is our attitude or position. We understand there is a humanitarian crisis, and whenever there is a humanitarian crisis, whatever the case, whatever uh, the, the, the beginning of the conflict, or not this conflict, but this turn of this conflict, because there were many 
stages in, this, uh, in the history of this conflict, I believe we need to help as much as possible because there's women, there are children, and we need to do as much as possible to save as many lives as possible. Because what's happening now in Hague is, uh, is a tr uh, in, in Haza. In Haza is a tragedy. And I don't believe that the big countries of the world cannot stop the crisis like that. Um, that's, frankly speaking, I don't believe this. President Zelensky, thank you so much for doing this. I'm Sadan from CNN News 18. Uh, uh, President, I have a question. Uh, since government of India these days uh, is focusing a lot on defense exports, and there is also Make in India initiative under which, uh, you know, uh, the new technology and uh, and defense uh, equipments are being manufactured. Since your country is at war with Russia, you pe you people also require, uh, uh, you know, arms, ammunition, uh, etc. Can we see uh, at a possibility of Ukraine directly engaging with India um, w uh, as far as uh, buying products products made in India? Uh, in near future yeah we are ready so we are ready I said a any time and I gave all this I I, 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 I give these all messages to uh, your productions and then uh, as I said we, we are ready to change we are uh, exchange yes we with te technologies we are ready to buy we are ready to produce we are ready to open your uh, companies here or we are ready to open our companies in India. So we are very ready for such uh, dialogue and for such work. Also, also President, a very last question. Was it discussed uh, when, in a meeting with Prime Minister Modi today? We spoke bas basically about some technologies and we, we see, it and, and I think that I, I wanted to show, show uh, and be very understandable for Prime Minister that we are open for very big deal if India will be ready. Mr. President, thank you for having us here. I'm Rishi, principal correspondent for Times Now. Uh, so my question is, in March, uh, there was a report from the State Department of US that US believe India can use its influence on Russia to stop this war. Do you endorse this? And what was, according to you, the major outcome of today's bilateral meeting? Well, because of oil, that's what we were talking about, because the billions of dollars are returned to Russia. If India won't be uh, buying oil, then Russia will have big troubles, significant troubles and challenges. And I think this is what was meant, because uh, first and foremost, is the economy, because there's not only the, 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 the oil, there's many other aspects. Currently, there's uh, very significant contracts on between of India and Russia. I'm not saying this is something new, you had this relationship, but as for the oil in terms of war, I believe this is the record-breaking contracts. Um, and I think that stopped it. He's, uh, he's afraid of losing the economy, he has nothing. Uh, except for oil. His uh, main currency is, is oil. If he's not going to sell oil or gas or other chemical products, then, frankly speaking, he will have very significant challenges with paying pensions, with paying salaries inside his own country. They're, they're not selling their technologies, and their economy is very slow. So. They do have a kind of an energy-based economy, and they're export-oriented, so if the countries won't be importing energy resources from the Russian Federation, then they will be helping the whole world. India, big influential country, not only in the world, also through the circle of very skeptical countries. If we will change Indian attitude to this war and to Russia, we will stop the war because Putin will want to stop it. Good evening, Mr. President. So the question is sir, that we have been hearing from a lot of European leaders that Ukraine will soon be joining the European Union. 
And then we hear contradicting uh, statements from other leaders. And we've been hearing for the last two and a half years that it will happen soon. When do you think Ukraine will be able to join the European Union finally? For today, it's really now really the, the question of time. We finished with all the things which blocked our way to EU. So it depends on, on the time, on technical things. I think that for today, there is a common, mostly, mostly, 99% common will of the EU countries to invite us and to see Ukraine as a member of European Union. So I think this is, that will be, when, difficult to say, but we will do our best to make it closer. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you so much for coming. Come often. Eh? Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>